All praises, all praises. Another day to come out here on the highways and hedges to stand on my feet as commanded as our Lord and Governor commanded us. And I want to say peace and salutations to all the elders of Great Millstone, all the apostles, and uh, peace and salutations to uh, Elder Sagala and Elder Yawakal, the hopeful elect. And I want to uh, give the uh, give the respect and all reverence to uh, Albert Vivens, the one the Lord had woke up to this truth that we we're able to come out here and, and continue on bringing out this word because the Lord woke them up back in the maybe like the 60s or even prior maybe prior to, prior to that so all praise to the Most High for waking those brothers up from the original One West Camp out in New York and all the brothers that are bringing out this truth with sincerity. I'm going to start with the book of Acts chapter 17. Oh, without further ado, first and foremost, I'm going to face in the east, give all honor and glory to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh, Shai, Can't forget to give all honor and glory to him. And I'm going to start with the book of Acts, chapter 17, and verse 10 through 13, and it reads, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. So this was Paul and Silas that was going to do the work of the Most High. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and search the scriptures daily. And that's what we do. We come out and we search the scriptures daily. That's what a lot of people, they don't seem to want to do, but that's what we're going to do. Because he actually commanded us to go out to the highways and the hedges. And he said, as many as you find, bid them to the marriage. Because we are in the last days. We are in the perilous times. We're in the time where Hamashiach, Yahawashai can crack that sky at any moment. The one that everybody calls Jesus, but he actually had a Hebrew name. It was Hamashiach, Yahawashai. And there's power in that name. So people calling on Jesus, on Sandra Borger, he's not coming to save anyone. Therefore, many of them believe, also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few, but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of Yahweh was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Just like any time the word goes forth, it, the word, like you said in Hebrews, the word of Yahweh is, is, is sharp and it's quick and it's powerful and it's more powerful than any two-edged sword. So it, it bothers people. It stirred the people up even with Paul and Silas. Book of John chapter 5. At verse 39 to 40, this is the words of Hamashiach Yahawashai. He said, Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. So this was Yahawashai saying, We got to search the scriptures. But he was saying what these scriptures actually do. And they are they that which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. So he was talking to the Pharisees, the scribes, and the elders at that time because they were rejecting him. And a lot of people are still doing it today. They walk by and they don't want to hear the words. You know, they think we're just some some bums, I guess, out here just preaching. You know, we, we have, we, you know, we all have our homes and all praises to the Most High. I don't have to go to the plantation anymore. The Lord, He's given me a break from that. But when I was going, I had to go before I was able to get my break from the plantation. So, I mean, all the brothers that are doing that, all praises to the Most High because you have a job and we are yet this day in our captivity. So let me read that again, John 5, verse 39 to 40. It says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. So this is Hamashiach, Yahweh was saying this, but the Pharisees, the, the scribes, the elders, the Sadducees, they actually didn't want to hear it. So they were, he was being rejected, just like today. People reject this word even today. They act like they don't want to hear what the Lord is saying, but that's going to cost people. People that reject, because they're not rejecting no man. You're rejecting the, the Heavenly Father, the Ottawa and Yahweh, who's given us his Holy Spirit. 
That's what people don't realize they're rejected. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18 through 19, and it reads, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So when people did, this was talking about the Mashiach. At, the, at first, it was Moses that the Lord had sent, but now he was saying he was going to raise up another prophet. That was talking about the Mashiach, Yahweh. That's what, who Moses was speaking about. Exodus 23, verse 20 to 22. Behold, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee to, into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. That's talking about Hamashiach Yahweh, which I there, because he, there's different angels. There's the angelic angels. Hamashiach was the, the, the prophet and the anointed one, and he was also the angel of all angels. And he was, he was the anointed one, the Messiah. And then it says, But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. So the Lord, he will go to battle and he will fight for us. Because that's why he said it in Chronicles. The battle isn't ours, but it's the Lord's. So if we, if we rest in him, we don't have to fight the battle. We just let... We rest in the Lord and let him do all that fighting. Second Ezra chapter 1, verse 38 through 40. And it reads, And now, brother, behold, what glory and see the people that come from the east. Now he's going to get he's going to go through a list of men. They were, they were messengers, or they were angels. These were the angels that be here on the earth. See that that's why he when he said, I sent an angel before thee, that was talking about Hamashiach. He was all he was above all the rest. Then it says, unto whom I will give for leaders, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It all goes back to that lineage and that bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not about the skin, but if your bloodline goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then you're part of this kingdom to come, because this one's at the end of its run. The Lord is getting ready to destroy this one, and he's going to usher in his kingdom. And then it says, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hoseas, Amos, and Mike, Micah, Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonas. He's, he's going through a list of all of them here in the book of Ezra. Nahum, and Abacuc, Zephaniah, Agai, Zechariah, and Malachi which is called also an angel of the Lord. So all the men of, of the Most High Yahweh were angels of the Lord, but there was one that was above all the rest. That was Hamashiach Yahweh He was above all of them. The book of Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13 through 16, and it reads, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. Because that's what a lot of people, they want to hear this world's wisdom. And he already made that clear. He's, he made that clear through Apostle Paul when he said the wisdom of this world, he said it is foolishness with Yahweh. He says, for as it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And he knows the, thought, he knows the thoughts of men, that they are vain. The Lord is saying that, that's his words. What he said through Apostle Paul in Corinthians. He knows this is all vanity. And he said, and, and this, this wisdom is just foolishness to him. And everyone's going to find out by, by following these gardens of, that they chose and following this, uh, all this wicked, all the ideology that they've chosen, they're going to have to pay the price. That's why this place is coming to an end. And if you're not calling on the right name, which is Hamashiach Yahawashai, you're, you're getting destroyed. So the Lord saying himself, says, therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. So he said the wisdom of their wise men here are going to perish, but he's in the understanding of all the ones that think they're prudent, 
think they're so wise and think they know everything. The Lord at least got their number. Woe unto them that, that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. This is what a lot of them do. They try to go in these back board rooms and write these unrighteous decrees, these ill dealings, and think they're hiding something from the Lord, but the Lord is talking about it through the prophet Isaiah here. He said, he said destruction unto those that write unrighteous decrees. And that, let me read that again. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark because nothing is hidden. Everything is open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. And they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? This is what the people think, think they're getting one up on the Most High, the Heavenly Father, the Adawan, Yahweh. So they'll say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? Then verse 16 says, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as a potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? So a lot of people, they'll say, well, God didn't do this right. He, we're the clay. He's the potter. He made us. But the people here will say he didn't do it right. So we don't need to hear what he's saying in that Bible. That's what a lot of people will say. That's why he's saying this. Isaiah 6, verse 9 through 10. And he said, go and tell this people, hear you indeed, but understand not and see you indeed, but perceive not. Because they can't seem to get the, the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding. They have eyes, but they can't seem to see things through. They can't see it clearly, and they have ears, but they're not getting any understanding. That's what the prophet Isaiah is saying. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. He said, make their mind, make their mind fat and their ears heavy. So we got to make the people understand. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Because if people actually would change, they would actually be healed. If they would actually change and be obedient to what the Lord actually said in the Holy Scriptures. So that's, let me read that again. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy. And shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. He, that's why he, he was, the Mashiach Yahawashai was saying, come unto me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. But a lot of people don't want to come to him, like it was talking about in John 5. They didn't want to come to him so that they can have light. They, they're choosing death rather than life, like it says in Jeremiah 8 and 3. lost my spot here then it says Ecclesiasticus or also known as Sirach chapter 2 verse 1 through 3 my son if thou come to serve the Lord prepare thy soul for temptation set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end so you may be increased at the last end Job 8, 7 through 9. Though thy beginning was small, yet the latter end should greatly increase. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of thy fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon earth are as a shadow. So he, with Job, that's why Sirach was saying, let me read that one in Sirach again at the beginning. It says, set thy heart aright, and constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou may be increased at thy last end. And so that's why Job was saying the latter end is going to be greater than the beginning. Because right now we're at the bottom, but that's what the Lord said, our latter end. He, he declares the end from the beginning and from ancient days. The things that are not yet done, he's going to do all his pleasures and his counsel is going to stand. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 4 through 5. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a low estate. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we've been, we've been tried in the fire, but well, that's why we're going through afflictions. 
we're going through all this the furnace of affliction we understand the lord is allowing it because he's molding us into his image we understand why we're going through this but a lot of people they don't understand what's going on in this society isaiah 48 10 through 13 says behold i have refined thee but not with silver i have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction for mine own sake even for mine own sake will i do it for how should my name be polluted and how, I will not give my glory unto another. He's only going to give his glory to the to Yasharala, to the ones he chose from the foundation of the world. Hearken unto me, O Jacob, and Israel, my, my called. I am he. I am the first. I also am the last. Now he's, he's, he's flexing and getting into his own attributes, how he's the first man, Adam, and the last man, Adam. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. He's the one that created the heavens and the earth, like I always bring out. But I'm not the one saying that. That's the, the most high saying this. Jeremiah 50. Now the judgments, 1 through 6. The word of, that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. This is spiritual Babylon and spiritual Egypt here. Now we got that eclipse coming to tonight or this evening, sometime today. That eclipse is supposed to be coming. That's the, that's the Hamashiach Yahweh Shai and the Most High trying to show the world that he's coming. Trying to, they're trying to, Yahweh is trying to show the world that he's getting ready to send his son, Hamashiach, to come and make the crooked way straight and the rough edges smooth. It says, declare ye, ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces, her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. That's what we're doing. We're coming to debunk all these lies, all the lies with the all the fake Jews. When we everyone knows that they're not the people, those Amalites and those Khazarians. We're those people. So we're out to, to debunk the lies with Cesar Borgier. Because Hamashiach Yahawashai was a so-called black man. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. So once Russia, China, North Korea, Iran start shooting the missiles over here, this place will never be inhabited again. And then it says... It says, They shall depart both man and beast, in those days and in that time, saith the Lord, that the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, so the, the southern and the northern kingdom, they'll come back together on that one stick, like it says in Ezekiel. And then it says, Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God, Yahweh, And they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, thitherward saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant. An everlasting covenant is what he, because that's what he wanted from the beginning. He wanted us to continue on steadfast, unmovable, to keep running this race with endurance, looking unto Hamashiach, Yahawashai, which is the author and finisher of our faith. This is what he told us to do from the foundation of the world. Some of us have woken up to this, but that's why we come out to try to wake the rest of these sleepy people up that don't seem to understand this. That's why we're out here, because a lot of them are still asleep. But guess what? The, they can laugh at the word if they want, and all those that say, aha, aha, he's gonna greatly confound them, and say, aha, because they must know it's the truth. That's why they had to giggle. And then it says, my people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains, they have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. But I haven't. Some of us haven't forgotten our resting place. It says in Galatians 4 and 26. It says, Jerusalem, which is above, is free. That is the mother of us all. Not, not Africa. It's a northern, the northern part. But we're from Jerusalem. That's where he said. Jerusalem, which is above, is free. That's the mother of us all. Then it says... Jeremiah 50, verse 17. Israel is a scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. See, we've been scattered in everybody's lands. 
That's what he's saying. The lions have driven us away. We've been, we've been scattered throughout the whole diaspora. The king of Assyria had devoured him. And last, the, his, this Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon had broken his bones. So we're in Babylon still. We understand that. That we are yet this day in our captivity, like Bar the prophet Baruch said. But the Lord is getting ready to get us out of this. Jeremiah 50, verse 14 to 16. Put yourselves in array against Babylon, the roundabout, all ye that bend the bow. Now he's talking about the mighty archers, the ones he gave the technology to shoot those ICBM missiles. That's the ones, the ones that bend the bow, the ones that are going to shoot those ICBM missiles over here. And this, they're going to be greeting you people that's wicked directly. And that's including uh, two-thirds of Yasharala too, even of our people, because they don't want to listen. They don't want to come back to what the Lord said. So those, those, uh, the ones that bend the bow in the scriptures of Jeremiah is talking about the mighty archers, the ones he gave the technology to shoot the ICBM missiles. That's what those mighty archers are going to be doing. And they're going to hit their targets because the Most High is going to make sure they hit their targets. It says, put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all ye that bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows. For she had sinned against the Lord. So the Lord is not sparing no arrows. He's not sparing no ICBM missiles with these nations. Because they said, he said, you've sinned against the Heavenly Father, the Adawan, Yahweh. This is what the Lord said. So what are we reading? The King James Holy Bible, the 1611. Like we read when we come out every time. And this is not my words. He said, I just chose to be a vessel of honor rather than a vessel of dishonor. A lot of people here walking around wanting to be vessels of dishonor. But the Lord, he said in John 15, you did not choose me, but I have chosen you and appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit and that your fruit remain. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're bearing the fruit that the Lord has given us by bringing out these words. He put these words in our mouth because he said in uh, 1 Peter 4 and 11, if any man speak, let him speak with the oracles of Yahweh. If any man minister, they have to minister with the ability that Yahweh, God, the one everybody calls God, but he had a name, Yahweh, the ability that Yahweh gives him. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going with the ability that he's given me. So that Yahweh may be glorified in all things. So they shout against her roundabout. She had given her hand. Her foundations are fallen, her walls are thrown down, for it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her as she hath done a, do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him that handleth the sickle in the time of the harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one of his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Because when it, people are going to be trying to run back, the ones that came over here, you know, from other countries, they're going to see that this place is doomed. They're going to start packing up and trying to get out of here. They're going to flee to their own lands. Because it's in the prophecy. Because the Lord has a judgment coming on this place. Jeremiah 51, verse 1 through 7. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. That destroying wind. He's going to be sending some ice. It, the wind can mean, it, it can mean it's two, twofold. It can mean a couple of things. You know, he has his waves and the wind, but, the, but the, this, this, this destroying wind is getting into the missiles. Unto, and will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. All these nations are coming against Babylon. This is what the Lord said. And against him that bendeth, let the archers bend his bow. And against him that lifted himself up in his brigand, brigandine, brig, uh, brigandine, and spare ye not her young men. Destroy ye utterly all her hosts. So the Lord is saying, destroy all their armies. That's what host means, armies. And when he says the Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts has a big army that's coming in the heavens, from the heavens. Thus the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Yahweh Judah of his God, Yahweh of the Lord of hosts. 
Though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. He's going to pay the people back for all the things that they've actually done here in the body. Now it's a big payback that James Brown was singing about way, way back in the 70s, the big payback. So now the Lord is going to do that big payback, the big recompense. Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken because everybody jumped on the bandwagon and jumped on their ideology and followed their, their doctrine and followed all their wickedness. So now, the, see, the Lord has took record of it. That's why the Most High Yahweh is called Ancient of Days. That's, that, he predates dates. How you doing? He, he predates dates, so there, you can't put a date on the Heavenly Father, the Adawan Yahweh. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. So the Lord said these people are out of their mind because they don't realize what they're doing. And it's going to lead them to destruction. That's why he's saying they're mad. That's why the Lord is saying that. See, the Lord has a sense of humor. He has a sense of humor in the scriptures too. Jeremiah 51, verse 20 to 21. And it reads, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. So the, he's going to say to Mashiach Yahawashai and those angelic angels, and they're going to be victorious. And they see, they're seeing the movements with the chariots. They're seeing the movements. They know what's coming. And with thee, it says, Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war, for with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. He's, and he's going to use his people too, like he said in Ezekiel 9, those elect men that are going to be under Amachiach, Yahawashai. He's going to give those men power to break the nations into pieces like clay pots. And Yahweh will, and I get that power. I want to get that power. And once he gives that power, we're coming. And he said, no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. And he said, none of them is going to prosper. Because he's the one that created the smith that blow up the coals and the waster. He's the one that gave the, those scientists the technology to build the ICBM missiles so that everybody can destroy each other. That's the Most High Yahweh that did that. Nobody had that type of wisdom except the Heavenly Father. So okay, you guys are in for a big, big surprise. And then it says, and, and with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of the Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Because for the controversy of Zion, for what you guys did to the twelve tribes, the twelve tribes of Israel. And this is for the controversy of Zion. That's why the eclipse is coming. That's why Hamashiach Yahawashai is coming. That's why he's got to make the crooked way straight. And the rough edge is smooth. So that's why we're going to come out and profess it. We're professing his holy name because we're at that time. And it can happen at any moment. That's why he said, be ready in season and out of season. So you, so you don't get overtaken like a thief because he's actually coming like a thief. It says, behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and I will make thee a burnt mountain. So when he's talking about the mountains, that's talking about powerful nations. He's going to make this a burnt nation with those ICBM missiles. It's all clear, but the prophets have to break this down. They're not going to tell you this at no Sunday church because they don't even know what's, what it's even talking about. So they can't break it down. And plus they're <laughs> under the 501c3, so they can't do what we're doing. The Lord has to put the spirit on you to do this. That's the only way you can do this. You can't, not a, those pastors don't have his spirit. That's why he said, if, if any man will do his will, they shall know of the doctrine, whether it be a man or whether they speak of their self. This is the Lord's doctrine, the Most High's doctrine, not ours. Malachi chapter 4. Now let's see how it's going to get burnt. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, this is, this is talking how he's going to burn these, the mountains, which are the powerful nations. 
when he talks about those mountains, that's just talking about nations. You know, the people that are in all these different nations. So it says, For behold, the day cometh that, that shall burn as an oven, and all the crowd, and yeah, all that do wickedly shall be stubborn. So this is what the Lord is going to do to all these powerful nations that go against him. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. He's cutting off the posterity. He's cutting off bloodlines. That's what he's talking about, the root and the branch. He's coming to get rid of the nephews and nieces, aunts, uncles, all the children. That's wicked. That's what he's talking about. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. We're going to get those new bodies. Like he said in Corinthians, we don't know what we shall become, but we know we're going to be just like him. Because we're going to get those, Yahweh will and get those bodies. And then we're going to be able to go and break the nations into pieces like clay pots. That's what the Lord promised to those that are obedient to what he says. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stalls. We're going to be just fine, Yahweh willing. And you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. So that's, that's what's coming on this place. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 50 to 57. For many great miseries shall be done to them, that in the latter times shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. Remember, he said, pride goeth before the fall. But he said, many great miseries are coming to all the ones that walk around in this time because they've walked in great pride. That's what the prophet Ezra said. This is what's coming. Many great miseries, saith the Lord. The Ottawan Yahweh said this. But understand thou for thyself and seek not the glory for such as be like, un be like thee. For, but this is the ones that fear his name. For unto you is paradise open. The tree of life is planted, and the time to come is prepared. Plenty and plentiness is made ready. A city is built, and rest is allowed. That, that's the, the new Jerusalem on the way. And, and that rest, that's why Hamashiach Yehoshai said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. That's what is going back to him. You can't put him out of the equation. He's not going to be removed from nothing. He's, a, it's the, he's the reason we live, we breathe, and we have our whole being through him. It says, the root of evil is sealed up from you, weakness is, is, and the moth is hid from you, and corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. So the Lord is going to, he's going to take care of this place. He's going to make the crooked way straight, in other words, and the rough edge is smooth. Sorrows are past. And in the end, it showed the treasures of immortality, everlasting life. That's what that's getting into, the tree of immortality. And then it says, oh, I lost my spot. And therefore, ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. For when they had taken liberty, they had the time 